AP Biology, Chapter 43, The Immune System, Part 2. In the previous part, we learned about some of the invaders of our body, viruses, bacteria, proteins, and fungi. Now we're going to learn about what we can do about it. The immune system. Remember, phago means to eat. Phagocytosis is basically cells eating something else. Here we have a white blood cell eating some bacteria. All right, this is the first thing that we need to get some notes on. We have three lines of defense in our immune system. The first line of defense are the barriers. Think of it as the barbed wire, and that's just an analogy to kind of think of, you know, how your body is defending itself. That includes your skin and mucous membrane, and we're going to go into some details on the first line of defense a little bit later. In fact, all three of these lines, we're going to go into a lot of details, but this is just an overview. Here we have the second line of defense. It's this non-specific patrol. We're just looking for any invaders inside of our body. And if we find something that is recognized as foreign, something like uh, antigen on the outside of a cell of a bacteria that the immune system uh, recognizes as, um, as not part of the body, it will eat it in a process called phagocytosis. And then the third line of defense is your immune system. And this is your elite trained units. They're very specific against one type of invader and this will involve our lymphocytes and antibodies. So, to review, we have two nonspecific lines of defense that go after anything, either preventing them from getting in or destroying them once they get in, and then we have a very specific third line of defense that only goes after one attacker, like a type of staphylococcus or a virus. All right, let's review. Now there's only one that's external, and that's the first line of defense. This is your skin and mucous membranes. Even though it lines the inside of your nose, it's still exposed to the external environment. The air from the outside gets inside your nose. The second and third line are both inside your body. The third line of defense is specific to an invader's antigens. All right, so let's go into the first line of defense. It's a non-specific defense, so it's a general defense against anything that wants to get inside your body. It's an external barrier. It includes the epithelium, the covering, and the mucous membranes. Your skin, respiratory system, digestive system, and genital urinary tract are all exposed to the external environment and have protection against it. Here we have uh, cilia in the back of your throat. These cilia sweep up particles, bacteria, that get in your trachea, and then it gets in your mouth and you swallow it, and then they get into the stomach acid and are destroyed. All right, so in the first line of defense, we have some chemical barriers to kind of prevent bacteria from growing on our skin. The first thing that you should know is sweat has a pH of three to five. Now you don't have to know the three to five pH, but you should know that sweat has a low pH, which prevents bacteria from surviving very well on it. Now, of course, some bacteria can still survive on your skin, but um, they're limited as a result of your sweat having a low pH. Your stomach acid is very low pH, pH of two. That's another chemical barrier that most uh, bacteria cannot survive. And then we have some other secretions that have um, antimicrobial properties as well as a way to get rid of microbes. Your tears, saliva, and mucus um, all trap microbes. So think of snot and mucus, uh, which are the same thing, as a trap, a glue trap for bacteria. When you uh, blow your nose, of course, anything trapped in that mucus gets uh, out of your body. Um, and if you uh, have any bacteria on your hands, when you lick your wounds, they actually uh, wash away some of that bacteria. So when you see like a cat or a dog doing that, that's adaptive. It has a survival advantage in the sense that it can uh, clear out some of that bacteria. Also, within your uh, saliva, you have something called lysozymes. Remember, lice means to destroy. Um, a zyme is just referring to the um, uh, enzymatic property of that uh, chemical. And um, lysozymes digest the cell walls of bacteria, destroying them. So when you cry, if you, uh, you, know, if you had a cut on your uh, hand or something, just watch the Titanic at the end, and then you'll feel the tears welling up in your eyes. Let those tears drop on your, your cut, and the lysozymes will help kill some of the bacteria. All right, so that's the first line of defense, and that one's fairly simple. And now we're going to get a little more complicated, but um, uh, the third line of defense is definitely going to be, without a doubt, the most complicated. All right, so your second line of defense is a nonspecific patrol. Basically, we're talking about white blood cells that are going to be patrolling your body looking for invaders. 
it's not specific. If it finds any invader of any type that's not recognized as self by the immune system, then it's going to attack it and destroy it. This is an internal barrier and it involves cells and proteins. We attack the invaders that penetrate our body's outer defense. So let's say you get a cut, your first line of defense is breached. Now your second line of defense kicks in. The first type of cell involved are called phagocytic cells, and this is a general name. Phago means to eat, cytom uh, means cell. So phagocytic just means cells that eat other things. We also have antimicrobial proteins that we'll talk about, things like complement and the inflammatory response. Why does it, a cut get all swollen and red as a response to uh, bacterial infection? Now, just as a review, we have uh, red blood cells that carry oxygen. And remember, there's about 250,000 hemoglobin proteins in each red blood cell. So that's a lot of oxygen carrying. But red blood cells are not involved with the immune system. It's the white blood cells that are involved with the immune system, and we have five types. They're called basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. And we'll talk about some details coming up. We also have platelets. If you remember, platelets are cell parts that are involved with blood clotting, and um, with the action of fibrin, we uh, form like a plug to prevent from bleeding out. All right, so in the second line of defense, there are two white blood cells that you need to know, and go ahead and write these down, monocytes and neutrophils. Now, they both do the same thing. Monocytes and neutrophils are both phagocytic cells that engulf invading bacteria and digest them with hydrolytic enzymes. Remember, phagocytosis is where you engulf something, and then a lysosome, uh, lysosome fuses with the um, vacuole and digests whatever's inside. Now, there's uh, some differences between these two types of cells. Monocytes are what um, starts off as the cell that becomes uh, a macrophage. Macro means big. Phage means eater. So macrophage literally means big eater. And we're going to find out these macrophages are also involved with the third line of defense too, the specific line. Neutrophils, you can kind of think of them as neutralizing an invader, are shorter lived. They don't live as long. But uh, most of your white blood cells are this type of cell, neutrophils. And again, they're nonspecific. They just engulf and digest anything that's not uh, your body that gets inside your body. Now all these red blood cells and white blood cells, here we have the red blood cells, here we have platelets, and here we have all the white blood cells 